Good evening. Bless you. In the name of the Lord, we're trusting the Lord to help us tonight. I have a little guest tonight, and I'll be putting him down. It's our little chihuahua, and he's wanting to help, and I don't think he's going to be good at teaching, so we're going to put him down. So we're so happy to have everybody. We trust that you've had a good day, and it's just so good to know the Lord and know that he's with us and guiding us in the times that we live. No matter what time it is, the Lord is with us every hour of every day, every situation, and what a great what a great presence it is to have his presence it has a peace and a quietness that passes all understanding the title of our lesson is encountering deception and persecution all right this is lesson number four it will be for june 26 and we're doing it a little early ahead of that uh, if my dad had lived he would be 105 years old on june 26. our central truth is god works to protect and perpetuate the church amen he does our key verse, Acts 5.39, from the King James Version, is, If it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest happily you be found even to fight against God. From the New Living Testament, it reads this way, it is, If it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. We have some learning objectives we want to pay attention to. We will recognize challenges churches can encounter as we fulfill the Great Commission. Yes, the Great Commission is still in effect for us. We will learn to avoid discouragement when challenges arise, knowing God preserves and protects his people. And lastly, we should trust God's keeping power while persevering in advancing his kingdom. If we ever thought there wouldn't be issues, I don't know where we would get that because God's word tells us that all that will godly will suffer, all that will live godly will suffer persecution. So we're going to talk about the early church here. Trouble is not something churches should see as totally out of the ordinary. You know, we do have an enemy, and his name is, is uh, you know, it's uh, Lucifer. He hates us. Carol, good to see you on tonight. Lucifer just w wants to take us down, and he's there to dis disrupt and cause all kinds of issues. But may we know that the one true God is with us, and he's guiding us, and he wants his word to go forward. So with his help and grace, and I see this by name of Rhonda on, glad to have you on. So we're, we're just glad that we can study the Word of God. And, you know, we see the examples of these people and what they went through early on. You know, they didn't have anyone else that had been through anything like this. So it was them. They, they, were, they were the new ones to experience things. But it's amazing as you read this how the Holy Spirit was there present. That's what Jesus has said. I'm going away, but I'm sending you a comforter, the Holy, the Holy Spirit. He's a spirit of truth and guiding and directing them amazingly how God used. I think of Peter especially, how God touched him. And here he is ministering so effectively and boldly, you know, as the Lord helped him. Our little chihuahua here has got something here. Come, come here, honey. Come here. I'll hold you. Come on. Rico. Anyway, we, we've got to just let him do what he's going to do. The power of the Holy Spirit in their lives was clear as they walked through problems with courage and integrity. One of the worst things that they encountered early on was deception within the church. That was an awful, awful thing. We hate to think of anything like this happening, but it did happen. And you wonder when they started so well. Let me see if there's others on tonight. Yes, I see Mary Horner, bless you. Uh, I see if any other, I don't see others that may be there, but I'm not seeing them. And I forgive you if I don't call your name. Even when things were going well, problems will never go away. The Lord was moving in a powerful way. They'd been filled with the Holy Spirit and how God was moving. There was miracles were taking place. The church was growing spiritually, numerically, and everything just seemed like nothing could go wrong. All was going well. A spirit of unity was at working among them. And I really liked that something that our, our writer brought out that was said the apostles, you know, often want to know who was the greatest among them. You don't hear any of that once they were filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, we get full of the Holy Spirit and the goodness of God and the love of God. We don't think like that anymore. We, we definitely should not. If we see that Spirit creeping in, into us thinking like that, we want to just take that to the Lord and surrender that to Him and just lay ourselves before Him and be exactly who He wants us to be. The early church dealt with early issues, with dealt with the issues of daily life and found them to be opportunities to be the hand of God extended. That's what they did. And may we be the same way. A spirit of unity prevailed among them. Yet some of those people, they faced financial needs. And the one thing was so important. There was people of those, that, people of means. And what they did, they were such so generous. And you know what? I heard a minister mention recently how that Jesus always cared for the poor. You never saw him ignoring the poor or ever speaking bad of them. 
and you know there are people and we everyone faced situations through no fault of our own we had a financial difficulty and God was faithful and you know I know my husband and I had prayed Lord we want to be able to give we want to be able to help others and the Lord has has had blessed us from time to time we've been able to do that we've been able to reach out and to be able to to give to others well there was one man in particular his name uh, Luke cited the action of a man named Joseph he was a Levite from Cyprus and he was a very gracious man in fact I think they named him or it could have been like a nickname uh, that they gave him was Barnabas and what he was a man that was always enlarging others years ago I heard brother Haymaker a pastor at the prior First Assembly of God many years ago and a presbyter there he preached a marvelous message on this how that he was always enlarging others that's what this man was known for and so he when he saw a need well in fact he he had probably get some extra money had extra property he didn't need and he wanted to donate that it was his money to do what he wanted with and what he wanted to do he could have given a portion of it but he chose and and he had a, a was a perhaps such means he could do it easily but he wanted to help others he sold some property and gave the money to the apostle to the apostle to distribute to people who were in need that's what he was for and so uh, that was a great thing to do and but he was known for that Christians even will face problems. Christian Christians will face uh, maybe uh, can be financial issues. Like I said, uh, as children of God, we faced it. And who has not? It'd be rare that a person hadn't. But it's in those times we have seen God come through in, in maybe some really unusual ways. And we found out early in our in our marriage, we, if we faced a difficulty like that, and and that definitely did happen from time to time. But how that we would we knew when we would pay our tithes we were going to honor God we were going to bless Him and we just laid it all before the Lord and we would just wrap our arms around each other and pray and trust the Lord to help us and He did and it was through those difficult times that we saw the Lord we didn't get wealthy or anything like that but we saw God's faithfulness and it just encouraged us generosity goes beyond money to sharing one's spiritual gifts time and care so fellow believers know they. Uh, so so fellow believers know they do not face the trials of their life alone there's nothing like somebody coming along beside you and praying with you gracious sharing is so much more than a handout it is a hand up you can't help people that will not help themselves in some way and there are some people who never try and if they don't we are not obligated to you know like one scripture tells us if, if they won't work there's work to, to be done and they won't work you don't feed them uh, so you you know some people would expect that and they would become literal just uh, cases where uh, poverty cases and we don't want that to happen and this was not what this was but hip hypocritical sharing is our next uh, title of our next section here and from Ecclesiastes 10 and 1 it states as dead flies cause even a bottle of perfume to stink so a little foolishness spoils great wisdom and honor and we have a case here of a couple named Ananias and Sapphira and what was a horrible thing, an honorable thing they could have done, and they sold some land, it was their land to do with what they wanted. If they had wanted, they could have come and said, we have sold some land and we're wanting to donate this portion of it. But instead, they agreed together to be deceptive. And they were going to pretend and say, make it look like that they were, they, say they, don't, they were giving everything, all of the proceeds they was going here to the church. And it would seem like that they were wanting attention and they were wanting, it was pride, and it was greed and pride that, that, was, that motivated their actions. But the, the sin of Ananias and Sapphira was not in keeping some of the money for themselves. It was to do it, it could have done what they could have. But this hypocrisy that was fueled at, by their greed and pride, it was an awful thing when you think of this, when God had miraculously how he'd come and ministered to them and to whether they were, and I you would hope that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. But, you know, Satan is always looking for a way to get in. And here, and he doesn't always come from the outside. Sometimes, yes, it's from the outside. But here, it was from within that he came. And this is what I've heard it said, and it's true. Satan is looking for, a, he's, he's looking for a person. He's looking for that person. I had a good friend of mine. She said, you know, I think that the devil studies us all the time to know uh, our strengths and our weaknesses. She said, I think he, uh, he does. Has him or his imps, they're studying. People will. Here was people, they reached out. I don't know how many that he, had, that he tempted, that he was trying to tempt, but they turned away. But this couple gave in to this 
and now how that they lost their lives when they came and they brought their offering and, and or one at a time the first of the husband came and did you sell oh yes that's exactly what it, that's what we sold it for and how that the Lord the, for the, through the Holy Spirit there again he's there uh, was the Lord being mean no they, you had to cut this off this the Holy Spirit showed him what was happening and he spoke to him why would you lie to the Holy Spirit you have lied that's what I mean you're lying to God and the you don't you don't do this and how that immediately how that he was he was smitten dead three hours later the wife came in and tells the same lie and how Peter told her the same feet that carried out your husband are carrying you out boom dead and you think that was a horrible that was an awful thing but I'm telling you uh, it struck fear in the in the hearts of those people and now there was there's true there were some people that didn't after this we'll see it later on in our lesson here in fact in fact the next part there were people who didn't want any part of this bunch of people because you know those were struck dead you know it was because of their sin and i'm wondering if it was because it was such an egregious sin so early on uh and you this the church is new i don't know all the reasons why god dealt this way i do want to say this uh, years ago, I heard a minister say, and he wasn't one of our Assembly of God ministers. He was a minister on the radio. I think my grandmother had had him on, and he was preaching and saying uh, that this Ananias and Sapphires were just erring children, and they went straight to heaven. Uh, folks, I don't read that that way at all. The wrath of God is what I see came on those people, and uh, I, I, I don't see them as just erring children not at all that was a planned thing it was a horrible thing you didn't want that to that awful thing to get into the church that seed to be sown and grow and grow and grow but the holy spirit empowered ministry among those people that remained true yes there were some of those that uh, that were afraid now of god and you know that was or that might have been an excuse that they used but you notice no one else was being struck dead now we know that it's just natural that we're all going to die so, but they weren't struck dead because of sin uh, that would have could have gone rampant through that church but what happened the, the the church here and the apostles they didn't get stuck right there on this situation oh my what are we going to do what are we going to do i'm telling you god dealt with it god dealt with it and so they moved on because the god the holy spirit was still there he was still moving we never forget that uh, something awful has happened we don't want to dwell on it and dwell on it and dwell on it god had moved god had taken those people out and so let's move on this is what they did they went right on to it the holy spirit was still the same jesus was going uh, jesus was going to the father and the holy spirit would come to empower them that had happened and so this went right on they said we've got to go past this we don't ignore it but they said we still have the the works of jesus he said that we could do them and here's what i like when people are saying well what they did when well, you know now in our time and well you know uh, the miracle uh, days of miracles that's passed that was just for those first century christians you don't find that in the word of god that is not uh, to to think that jesus he wouldn't heal anymore he wouldn't deliver anymore he wouldn't he wouldn't work miracles that's totally false i mean I think every those of you listening can probably say you've seen miracles in in your life at one time or another. I know I can, and I allude to it a lot. But it's, uh, the Lord marvelously touched me. It was a miracle uh, that that I'm alive today after being in the car accident, and it's etched in our mind, January the eighth, twenty twenty one, on a Friday afternoon about five o'clock. But I found how that the doctor told me it's a miracle you're alive. It's a miracle. It's a miracle because of the hematomas that were in my brain and that they actually drained on their own but actually it was a miracle of god and, but i'm just i'm grateful because uh, god still means he still has something for me to do so he he did a work he is still there he is still it wasn't just those people he said he said to the disciples greater works than these shall you do because i'm leaving the holy spirit for you and he's going to be here for you and so may we he didn't just stop with them i cannot believe that he just said okay now when you when these die it's just over with you just do the best you can. No, that Holy Spirit is still here, and may we love and appreciate. He enables us to witness, and I tell you, miracles begin to be performed. They continue to be, because not everybody lived in fear. There was some, the church was growing, and when they some realized,
I said, what had happened, that it was because those people sinned and rebelled, but said, I, I'm not going to live like that, so I'm not going to have to worry about that. I'm just going to love and to just trust and believe. And they saw what God was doing in these apostles' lives. And they saw the miracles that were happening. And one place I, I mentioned, I'm thinking of it now, so I'll just say it now, how that uh, Peter, you know, how that uh, just as his shadow was cast on people, how that healing would come just and, 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 the, and said they, they were all healed. But, you know, fear versus faith. You had a time that some of those people uh, said, well, I, I, I just won't, won't go to that church now because they had those people die right there. I mean, they died right there. Uh, you know, within the space of three hours, the husband and then the wife died. And But you know what? The others have said, well, I have faith and trust in God. I'm going to believe in Him. So it was faith over... When fear knocks, faith should answer. I remember hearing our pastor, Brother Powell, preach that years ago when back over at Sterling way, way years ago. And he said... Fear knocked, faith answered. So that's what we've got to answer with faith and confidence and trust in God. And so some of those people, though, there's always some. We can think now a current situation of our, uh, fairly current, but with the COVID thing. There were people, and uh, you know, said, well, we were locked down and we couldn't go to church. They've never returned to church. But guess what? They've returned everywhere else. You know, they go out to eat, they go shopping, they go, they buy their groceries, they do all the things uh, that they've done before, except go to church. Does that add up, folks? No, it tells me that their heart really is not where it should be. I tell you, I don't, I don't want to be them when the day comes that, you know, that death, death comes. Growth occurred in the good soil of this church. The gospel was being powerfully pro proclaimed. And it was the unity and it was the love and the devotion to God that characterized the believers. They were like him and there was, it talked about a hol holiness, a genuine following after God's way was evident. And, and yes, you saw it in the judgment of God against, against hypocrisy. But those same uh, the conditions will lead to growth in churches. And our time is that we're going to, when, when those things happen, I'm going to be true to God. I'm not, I don't have to run and live in fear because God took care of somebody like that that had sinned. I just want to be faithful and true to God. I mean, God's not looking around somebody he can kill right quick. He isn't looking like that. He isn't thinking, looking, seeing everybody, what they're doing wrong. You know, this is the idea I had as a little kid sometime. I had a picture in my mind of, of God was like he had almost like a hammer. And if I did, uh, he was waiting and watching me to see if I did so he could just crack me on the head. That was an awful thing. And yet I wanted to love the Lord and serve him. I, 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 but I feared him as far as being a, 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 a terrible fear. It wasn't that respect we should have. But I had a wrong idea of what God was like. And I was so thankful when the Lord made it clear to me one day, you know, that, that he loved me, that he loved me. I could rest in his love. And I'm thankful that he reaches out to us even as a little child. He spoke to me. I'm so appreciative of that so much. Miracles are not a guarantee that people will come to faith in Christ. Uh, for in Jesus' own ministry, that didn't always happen. And when I read this, I thought of something I heard of, of a, a man tell that he was ministering on a college campus in California. And I don't remember which, but it was a large university. And as he was ministering in this one man who didn't know really anything about God, and he said, well, if it's really true what you're saying about this Jesus, if it's really true that he can heal, you're talking about he can do miracles, he can do healings, and said, well, he was, said, I'm deaf. He told him which ear he was deaf in. He said, then if he is really God, if he can really do those miracles, if he really can do that today, then I want to hear. Well, this preacher said just, I guess, under the anointing or whatever, he just stuck his finger. He said he his thumb in that man's ear and just stuck it into, like, pretty deep. And he just, he just prayed like that and pulled it out. And that man was, so he said, I can hear, I can hear. Uh, you know, well, he, you can't say this man really had, but he was open. And what did he do? He received the Lord. So there are some people, these miracles do draw them. It's, uh, it's been our understanding from missionaries who have gone to other countries. And one uh, missionary in particular told us that he really felt sorry uh, for the uh, missionaries there that were wonderful people of God, but they did not believe in the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He said they were literally powerless in those lands. He said where you had the occult was so strong, where you had uh, so he's, uh, witch doctors. He said, you know, Satan has power and said they were literally powerless. And so when, when you ran to these demonic spirits, people uh, that were, had devils, and he said how that they, filled with the Holy Spirit, they could cast them out. 
that God gave them. This is one thing our lesson brought out again and again, is to make sure that we give the Lord glory for this, that we didn't do it, that we, we didn't cause these miracles. You know, the Bible said he clearly said, greater things than you had that I do, you're, you're going to do too because I see in the Holy Spirit. You give the glory to God. Thank Him for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that are there. Yes, He sent the Holy Spirit. So God moved and blessed and so what, though there was persecution going on and though there was all they had this horrible sin that Ananias and Sapphira would, and you think Ananias and Sapphira lost eternally and there they could have been like the others, being blessed and being and, and helping people with with the, their their money with with the, and you know you makes me think of how many things ways the Lord can use people. It's amazing how people have the very gifts, talents, talent, the gifts, talents, skills, and abilities that people have. Uh, I've known in some churches that uh, one in particular I was thinking of they they was required of their members that your those talents and gifts that you had you were to use them there in the church. And one in particular I remember was they had they expected like their school teachers. There were if you had people there in their church that actually had never had the privilege to finish school for whatever reason. And so they expected them to help those students and and, and help them that they could go ahead and get their, their GED. I guess they still give the GED. Uh, but uh, maybe somebody was a mechanic and maybe you had people that were so poor they could not afford to have their vehicle fixed. Or maybe they could teach people that. You know, that's one good thing of, and some of the skills that can be taught in, in the youth ministries, in the uh, children's youth ministries. Uh, simple skills that can be taught that can be very, very helpful. And so that just thank the Lord that He can use us whatever we do. It doesn't always have to be that you're a preacher or a teacher or a great singer or this or that. Whatever it is the Lord has gifted us to do, He can use it in the ministry. Helps are a tremendous blessing. So may we know and that God can use us and never feel guilty because we can't do what somebody somebody else does. Persecution and rejoicing. Faithful witness brings trouble. Things were going well for the early church, our writer says. God was moving miraculously and the church was growing, but opposition came against him. Can you imagine anybody being against what God was doing, blessing and helping and ministering, and these people were staying together. I mean, they were going right on, and they were trusting in the Lord and believing in God all the time and daily. You know, they were in the temple. They were praising the Lord, and they were, you know, God was just moving. It was a wonderful thing. But, you know, not everybody was happy. And I, I mean, here, here they came, the followers of Jesus. They gathered regularly in the in the temple to worship and receive the apostles' teachings. And guess what happened? Jealousy. It wasn't in the church this time, but it was in what should have been really the church. It was the leaders there, the high priest and the apostles. The high priest had the apostles arrested. I mean, they said, and you know, you know, could, very likely our writer said could have been if they could dishearten the people. Just see what happens if you're going to follow these people. Well, people were seeing the goodness of God, and they both said, Jesus is real. We see it here. Look at these miracles we, we've seen, and we see the change in these people's lives, and they care, and they love us, and they're reaching out to us. They wanted this. And, I mean, the, those leaders of the, of the high priest and all, they despised these people and said, until they just had them arrested. They arrested the apostles. Why would you do that? What, but you know what? The apostles, they didn't just go grief stricken and say we stop we give up we won't do it anymore no you know what they did can you imagine uh, we don't have the story here in the bible and tell us what all they did in while they were in jail but i don't do know this what the lord did he sent an angel down there and just uh, released them from their prison you know you couldn't hold them when the lord says i want them out they're out it's no big deal with god he said get them out he didn't go through all the stuff and file this and that and the other. And the kid, he just sent an angel down there to let him out. So, well, and said, now here's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go back to the temple. So what they did in the morning, you know, when the temple was open, they went and what did they do? They began to, well, they're, they're going to teach and preach, talk about Jesus and his greatness and power. That's what they do. That, they talked about the Holy Spirit. I mean, everything the Lord had told them. And they had seen, they themselves had seen miracles. They themselves, no doubt, that the Lord had used them. Uh, in, in the, the gifts and the miracles and all. And so these people were, they, they weren't being quiet. Peter was able to stand. He was a spokesperson. He just, I mean, he spoke up. And he, he didn't waver at all. But, well, they said they had to go get these people. The, you know, it was the, uh, 
the uh, the Sadducees, you know, as they as I said last week, they were sad. You see, they didn't believe in in the resurrection, and they say that Jesus had risen from the dead. They could not stand that. They were so angry. But I tell you, and they said we got to go down and get those people, and we're going to nail their almost like we'd say nail their hides to the wall. Well, they they got they went said well we went down. They went down to the prison to come back empty-handed and said they're not there. So the prison was locked up. Uh, but when we went in and got in there and all and said. They, the, the prisoners are gone. The, I mean, those 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 prisoners are gone. What do you mean gone? Somebody got word to them and said, "Well, they're 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 down at, at the temple and and they're teaching and preaching about this Jesus again." So what did they do? They get these people and they're wanting to stop them from doing this. But rather than being intimidated, their response was not to be intimidated. They just were speaking truth and it was righteousness. And and, uh, and how that Gamaliel, he would remember that name, Gamaliel. He was the one that we would say, in our terms, they would probably say, the only one had common sense. But it, he said, we, we, we better wait just a minute. He said, before we do anything, about before you take any rash action, they wanted to kill him. That is what they wanted to do. We're going to stop this stuff. Well, did killing Jesus stop anything? No. He was raised from the dead. But these people, they didn't learn because they refused to give in they would not surrender they loved being you know having the attention and having the money and having all the fame and people looking up to them rather than accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God and there they were saying Abraham we have Abraham for our father but you know it had already been prophesied and this was this Jesus he was the Savior our Redeemer they refused him. They rejected him. But Gamaliel told him, you could be fighting against God. You might be. And so he said, I think you need to back off. And so they did. But you know what they still did? They still went and they had them flogged. And I thought, how wicked, how vile. Why would they flog these wonderful people that had done nothing but good? It was the evil inside of them. But as they they reached out and they and still ministered no matter what happened. It was the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that the people were seeing in them. And that's why they, they were responding. But these leaders did not, would not respond. I like what our writer brought out. It's so good. While it's critical, we are willing to die for what we believe about Jesus Christ. It is equally vital that we're willing to live for what we believe. And we did do it with a sweet spirit. Uh, that we're not angry and bitter and lashing and blame. if we if we suffer trouble for our faithfulness let us rejoice that we are counted worthy to suffer shame for his name and this is what uh, they they counted themselves worthy they were not intimidated but you know what they were left rejoicing and praising and magnifying Lisa glad to see you on now so what is God saying to us as we uh, finish our lesson and right now, I just uh, remind everybody that for people, some who may not know, is that we do upload these. I'll be up pretty late going ahead and I'll upload these to uh, this lesson to YouTube on my YouTube channel under Karen Clymer. And also, I will then upload it to Rumble and it is there under uh, my name on that is Pug Mountain, P U G M T N. But I will have the links up later uh, tonight before I go to bed. We can trust God's power to keep us through things that try our faith, and trials will come. They can come from within our ranks through deceptive teachings and practices. They can come from outside in the form of opposition and oppression. We can stand not by our own strength, but in the power of the Lord. So people say, well, I just did it because, boy, I just determined I was going to do it. You know, it's through the power of the Lord. It's through the Holy Spirit that we have that Holy Spirit with us guiding us into all truth and sustaining us in the sometimes in the midnight hour the bible tells us that since the days of john the baptist the, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it before now we're not talking about violence as far as you know getting guns and and beating up somebody or getting a hammer and throwing it at somebody we're not talking about that but i mean you have to get serious we're talking about getting violent and said so you we pray and we believe and we trust god and, and we don't back down we depend on the Lord. Yes, Lord, I'm standing firm for you. I will not be denied. You've got help for me. His presence gives us the conviction and courage to remain faithful to the Lord and his mission. 
You need to ask us a question. Let's yeah. l listen to this. What challenges do you face as an individual believer in living in obedience to the Lord? Yeah. What has he called you to do in service to him? What challenges do you see facing churches as they seek to fulfill the Great Commission? How can we help one another overcome these challenges? You know, it is so true that now people are going sometimes every, anything they can think of to try to draw people in. Well, I tell you what, let's just stay with the Word of God and preach the truth and let people respond to the truth and come to Him. But if they don't want to be any different, if they, if you know what? Isn't it wonderful to, to be different than what you were? I'll never forget that one man testifying, and he said, I was so sick of sin. He said, I didn't want to be like this. I wanted to be, to be different And how the Lord came, changed his life, gave him you know, a, a life of a truth and righteousness and just the greatness of God. So good to know the Lord. Now, in our ministry in action, let's read this. Consider how you can encourage and help leaders in your church in fulfilling the Great Commission. One thing is to be faithful to the house of God things to be faithful to find a place of ministry in the church some way somehow one man that I, I heard about how that he he couldn't find anything to do he said I need it I need a job and they said well they're all full and he said well I, I want to work for the Lord he just got saved and they didn't know anything they said every position is filled well he found something to do you know a child of God will he started helping he saw those young mothers and I've told this before but it's so good he saw young mothers struggling, getting out of their cars to get into church, having maybe one or two kids here and then a baby in their arms, and he realized they need some help. So he would help those young mothers get them into church and get them help them get seated. He'd get their song, get the songbook, find out what page they were singing on, and hand it to them. You know, so there's there's place things you can do. I heard of one woman who wanted the Lord had saved her and cleansed her, and she wanted she wanted to bring some people in and teach them they didn't have any room for sunday school they didn't have any another another place available well she found a, a broom closet she cleaned it out and she began to have people coming in there and, uh, and she won people to the lord she taught them what how jesus had saved you know people find you know love for jesus finds a way to minister commit to praying for and supporting persecuted christians in in at least one country think about that. I pray especially for those, well, every day for those in North Korea and there's other places. Think of those people that are actually not eating grass because they don't have sufficient food. I've asked God that to could just put it in their mouths and whatever it is, uh, just put food in their mouths. Lord, I, that it could even appear on their tables or whatever. And if it's grass, Lord, then you'll turn it into nutritious and something tasty for them. Determined to grow closer to the Lord and prepare to stand when challenges come. And it's not if, it's what it says when they come. They will. May we be true and faithful. You know what? We're not in this alone. We're in this together. And may we always remember that encountering deception and persecution, the Lord will help us and we can stand for truth and righteousness. How are you going to know the difference? It's by studying God's Word. I'm so thankful for His precious Holy Word. I'm thankful for the written Word of God. May God bless you and keep you. We look forward to seeing you late next Saturday night. The Lord bless you. Goodbye.